What's up everyone? I know it's been a long time. It feels like forever. But I would like to say that we are back. These past couple of months have been a little hectic for me and my family. So I haven't been able to focus on creating this YouTube content, but I've been working and boy, have I been busy. As some of you know, I started a art documentary series that is on YouTube. We are a few episodes in and it's been great. While doing that, I visited a art gallery here in Pinellas County, Florida, which is called Creative Pinellas. And they had this incredible um, exhibit of this group of Puerto Rican artists. So um, I reached out to them thinking maybe they can uh, be a part of this uh, documentary series I'm working on since they're more short. But once I heard the story of what was going on and how they got started, it kind of blew my mind. And I said, there's no way. I said, there's no way I can fit all of this in a short documentary. It would just not do the group justice. So with that in mind, I pitched to them how about we do a feature length documentary on the group in terms of what it means to be an artist of Puerto Rican descent and the importance of Puerto Rican art and culture within the American history. They love the idea. So with that, we just jumped into production. The group is kind of scattered all around Florida, which makes it good because I'm in Florida, but we were before the exhibit closed, we were able to get all of them together and we did one full day of interviews. But again, uh, all the artists had such a unique look into what art means to them and to what being Puerto Rican means to them. So after that, um, this group has been running since 2015 and their last show is coming up in Puerto Rico in this very prestigious museum there, which will be September of this year. I, said, I, I thought to myself, well, I have to capture the show in Puerto Rico. But how will I get there? I realized quickly that I'm going to need funding for this film. So began the whole looking into funding and crowdfunding sources. It has been way more difficult than I thought it'd be, but hey, here we are and I've dedicated myself into making this happen. A lot of the costs would go into the editor of the film and also traveling expenses, which if you've traveled in the past few years after COVID, you understand that it is increasingly getting expensive. Everything else I will have to, I'm basically having to cover myself. With that said, for the past few years, I've been using DZO Cinema Glass and I thought to myself, hey, wouldn't it be great if I can reach out to them and see if they wanted to sponsor up with me for this film. It was a total shot in the dark, but I got an email back. I told them about the project and I let them know that so far the shooting that has been done has been using their Vespid Primes and how incredible the footage has looked. I sent them the trailer and they were kindly agreed to sponsoring the film by sending a Vespid set of primes. And me personally, I have the 35 millimeter and it just looks incredible. So I've been testing the other lenses to prepare for the upcoming shoot dates of the documentary, which will be finishing all the interviews. And these lenses are even better than they just, they're incredible. So again, thank you DZO Film for sponsoring the film and allowing us to use this incredible glass. We truly are appreciative of what you guys do for everybody in the film industry independently. 
at that first initial day of production in October, it's been difficult to get everyone together and find time to film the rest of the interviews and B-roll. Especially during the holidays, everybody's everywhere, and I was working on this TV show as a first AC, so my time was minimal at best. So once that cleared up, having to relocate everything that we have. But now we're here, things are getting somewhat back to normal. With that said, I'm going to show the trailer if you haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it, it's already on YouTube, but here it is. Rhythms, rhythms, rhythm. uh -huh. Vaya. Uh -huh. Vaya. Uh -huh. Vaya. Desde tiempos históricos, Puerto Rico era considerado la llave de las Américas. It brought me to understand who I was, who I've been all of my life. Siempre ha sido un punto de encuentro para diferentes culturas. And if that's my heritage and it's your heritage, then we have a connection. We are happy people, a joy people, full of brown coconut, mango fruit, and love juice that pours on us wherever we go. La raza puertorriqueña se ha nutrido de toda esta historia de resistencia y de supervivencia. Y eso es lo que hace que la expresión artística del puertorriqueño sea tan contundente y tan cargada de emoción. When you start sketching and looking for answers, it's solving problems. And, and when you're actually painting, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Even the problems are enjoyment. Podemos expresar cosas que no se dicen con palabras, pero se trabajan con el color, la forma. Art is out there. You just gotta open up and use your hands and your mind to be able to create your own thing, you know? It's something that uh, you can describe like words, but for me it's wellness too. <laughs> Definitely I want to be part of that because it's very important for us because we are artists, but we are Puerto Rican. Nosotros tenemos tanto que dar y tenemos tanto por lo que sentirnos orgullosos que deberíamos estar celebrándonos unos a otros en lugar de estar compitiendo entre nosotros mismos. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. It, a lot of work went into it, and so far, we are doing well. Again, we have a sponsor, and we're looking into other sponsors. So if you want to reach out to see how you can work with us on making this film a reality, please don't hesitate to message or email. We would love to hear what you're thinking. Again, now that I'm sort of set where I am, I should be putting out a little more consistent videos here on YouTube. I appreciate you guys sticking around. If you have, thank you. If you're watching this, please press the like button and subscribe.